Getting lost in the middle of nowhere used to be a pretty big problem. These days, however, you just whip out your phone or some other GPS-equipped device and you're able to determine your location precisely in a matter of seconds. And even if you're not in the middle of nowhere, GPS is still a very useful and extremely versatile tool. And today we're going to see how it actually works. All right, let's go back inside. GPS stands for Global Positioning System, and it was originally designed by the Americans for military use. Uh, nowadays, basically anyone can use it. Uh, some other systems have also been designed and deployed, such as GLONASS and Galileo, and I believe there is obviously some Chinese alternative as well. Uh, but today we'll be discussing GPS because it's the most well-known system and because all these other systems work using the same principle. An important feature of GPS is that there is no data connection required for it to work. So your GPS device doesn't have to communicate with any other party for the GPS system to work properly. Now your GPS device, I'm just, just going to pretend this phone is GPS compatible to, so that I have something to point at. Your GPS device receives radio signals being transmitted by satellites. So we have a bunch of satellites which are constantly transmitting radio signals and my device is picking up those signals but it's never actually sending anything back to those satellites so it's not a communication system. It also doesn't need phone reception, in internet or anything like that. So some people think that uh, GPS satellites are looking down onto the surface of the earth and see where you are located and then transmit that to you through the internet that's not how it works okay so in fact it's your phone doing all the work it's just or your gps device or whatever it's just picking up signals that are being transmitted by satellites all the time the next question is of course how does your device determine its position in the world based on signals that it receives from the sky? So in order to understand this, let's consider a very simple example, okay? We have a two-dimensional plane, a two-dimensional map, essentially. In other words, a flat Earth, because yes, GPS wouldn't work if the Earth was flat, but a flat Earth scenario happens to be very good for explaining how GPS works. So we have a flat Earth, and we're located, we're located somewhere on this plane, okay? Also, there is a satellite in a known position hovering above this plane, which I'm going to call Satellite A. Satellite A is sending out these radio signals, and those signals are being picked up by my GPS device, okay? Now, the first thing my GPS device does is determine its distance to Satellite A. So you might be wondering, how does it do that? You know, it receives a signal from satellite A, how does it determine the distance based on that? Well, of course, radio signals travel at a constant speed, which is the speed of light. So we're able to measure the distance based on how long it takes for that signal to reach us. So the signal is sent by the satellite, takes a tiny amount of time to reach the receiving device, and based on the time it takes for the signal to reach us, the device knows how far away that satellite must have been. So based on the travel time of the signal and the fact that the signal travelled at the speed of light, it determines the distance. And so now the GPS device knows that we could be in this point, or in this point. We could in fact be anywhere on a circle with that distance, with that radius around satellite A. In other words, we're not able to determine our position with this one satellite. So let's bring in satellite B then, okay? So we do the same thing for satellite B. We measure our distance, we get another circle. Now we can determine our position because our position has to be in one of the intersects between these two circles. And then what we often do um, is we decide which point it is based on other information that we have. So based on what makes sense, we pick that point. So we've now determined our location. Of course, we could add a third satellite to know for sure which point it is and to further increase precision. We could add a fourth satellite, fifth satellite, as many satellites as we want, and the measurement will get more and more precise. Real GPS works in three dimensions, okay, because the Earth is not flat. And so in real GPS, we're using at least 
three satellites. Because now, instead of getting circles, we're getting spheres, and the intersect between two spheres is still a circle. So we need a third sphere to narrow it down to a number of points. Unfortunately, we're having some problems in the real world that we need to deal with, right? This implementation of GPS that I just explained would simply not work in the real world. There are practical problems that we need to overcome. First of all, there is the clock in our GPS device. The clock in a satellite is an incredibly advanced, high-precision atomic clock, which, for all intents and purposes, is pretty much the perfect clock. The clock in your phone, on the other hand, is an absolute piece of shit, okay? You might think that it's rather accurate, because it's accurate compared to the, the stupid old stopwatch that you used to use before you had a smartphone, um, but in fact, compared to the atomic clock in a satellite, it's an absolute piece of garbage, and it's not suitable at all for this kind of very high precision measurement, because you have to realize that signal is traveling so damn fast that the time we're measuring is so short that we need an extremely high precision in our clock, and that precision is not there in our GPS device. So how is it done? Well, I'm afraid we have to get into a little bit of maths here. Let's go back to our 2D example. Remember that we couldn't figure out our position with just one satellite. Now, graphically speaking, that's because we could be anywhere on that circle. Mathematically speaking, that circle is described by a certain equation. There are two unknowns in that equation. Those two unknowns are x and y, which are our coordinates, our position. Our position consists of two unknowns. And of course, if you've ever done maths, you'll know that if we have two unknown variables in one equation, there is no way we're going to solve that, which is the mathematical reason that we can't figure out our position. However, if we add the second satellite, satellite B, we get another circle, we have another equation, and of course if we have a set of two equations and two unknowns, that is something that we can solve, which leads us to those points. What we can do is introduce a new variable. So what I'm going to say is the error of our clock, I'm going to call that capital E. So capital E, error, describes how bad our clock is. Right? We know the clock sucks, okay? But E describes exactly how much it sucks, okay? Essentially how many seconds it's off, or how many nanoseconds, whatever, right? So we have a third variable. So now what we have is three unknowns. We have x and y, which are the position we're looking for. You know, those are still unknown. And we also have e, the error of our clock, something else that we don't know. Now you can see that with satellites A and B, we have two circles, therefore two equations, but we have three unknowns, because each one of those equations now also contains the error, the e. So we can't solve this, so we can't work out our position. But, of course, if we add a third satellite, satellite C, we get another circle, we get another equation. So now we have three unknowns, but we also have three equations, which is something that we can solve. And now, despite the error, we can figure out our position accurately. It's unbelievably clever. Real GPS works in three dimensions, okay? Remember. So we already needed three satellites to determine our position because we already had three unknowns. I didn't explicitly say so, but we have X, Y, and Z, of course. We have three coordinates because we're in a 3D space. So we already have three unknowns. We already needed three satellites to determine our position. Now we have a fourth unknown, which is the error, so we need four equations. In other words, we need four satellites in real GPS to determine our position. So this is why GPS, when you have like a little smartphone app for GPS, it always tells you it needs at least four satellites to work. It's because it needs to deal with that error. We're not there yet, though. Oh no, we're not there yet. It's not done yet, because there is another problem, another very important problem. The problem is a little theory that a man called Albert Einstein came up with, which is called general relativity. Now, we're not going to talk in depth about general relativity in this video, but the part of it that is important for GPS is the fact that time 
progresses more slowly when you're in a gravitational field. And the opposite is also true. Time goes faster when you're not in a gravitational field or when you're in a weaker gravitational field. So to our satellites, which are further away from the Earth, time is passing more quickly than it is to us on the planet and to our GPS device. And so we need to compensate for this as well. And then I haven't even mentioned things like um, the atmosphere, right? Because the radio signal will travel at different speeds depending on the conditions of the atmosphere. You get the point, right? There is a lot of challenges to overcome with GPS. There's a lot of challenges to overcome with GPS and we have overcome those challenges and it works really, really well. And now you know a little bit more about how it works, hopefully. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and of course, thank you for watching.